In this tutorial we will make a simple IoT device. Let's assume that we want to make a device which announces us when a door has been opened or closed in a distant room or building. What steps do we need to take to make this system? Firstly, the door position should be detected. Then sensor data should be sent to the device to which speakers are connected. Finally, if the door state is changed, the device should make a notification. Now, we must decide which sensor or method will be used in each step. For detection of the door opening, there are several possibilities. For example, we can use a camera and do recognition, or use a switch, which will turn on when the door is open and turns off when the door is closed. Or we can use an ultrasonic sensor, and measure the distance between the door and the sensor. Using a camera and doing recognition is a too complicated and expansive method for this simple application. Using a switch is difficult from a mechanical point of view, because adding a rotational switch on the door hinge requires relatively big modification. So, in this tutorial we will use an ultrasonic sensor. This sensor could be found on Amazon or any other robot store. The principle of door opening detection is very simple. We will acquire distance from the sensor to the door periodically, and if the distance will be bigger than a threshold value, the door will be considered to be open. There are also several options in the data sending method. For example, we can use Bluetooth or the Internet. But Bluetooth can send data approximately only within 10 meter range. This is too short for our application. So, we will use the internet connection. As a notification method, notification by light or by sound is commonly used. In this application we will make an announcement using a recording of human voice. So, we will use a USB speaker for this purpose. As was explained previously, we will use an ultrasonic sensor to measure distance. In this application ultrasonic sensor is connected to the Arduino Micro. Since Arduino also has a D converter, it is convenient to collect data from various sensors and send it to another computer. To send the data to Raspberry Pi, serial communication is used. In this application we will just connect a Raspberry Pi USB port to an Arduino Micro USB port with a cable. To send the data, UDP is used. I will explain what UDP is later. On the server side we just have to connect a USB speaker to Raspberry Pi. Now let's see how does an ultrasonic sensor work. Firstly, the trig pin should be set in the high state for 10 microseconds to generate the ultrasonic sound. Secondly, the transmitter will send out an 8 cycle sonic burst which travels with the speed of sound. Thirdly, if the 8 cycle waves bounce back from the object surface, they are collected by the receiver part of the module. Finally, the ultrasonic sensor echo pin produces a high pulse output. The output pulse duration is the same as the time difference between transmitted ultrasonic bursts and the received echo signal. Note that ultrasonic sensor works well when it is placed parallel to the obstacle surface. If the target surface is not parallel to the sensor, the sonic burst will reflect to the wrong direction, and measured distance will not be accurate. Now let's see what TCP and UDP are. TCP and UDP are part of Internet Protocol. The Internet Protocol is a collection of different protocols for devices to communicate with each other. Both TCP and UDP are major protocols within the Internet Protocol. Now let's see TCP and UDP in detail. TCP stands for Transmission Control Protocol. TCP is a connection-oriented protocol. Let's assume that we have a sender and receiver. To establish a connection, firstly the sender sends to the receiver a message called Synchronize Sequence Number. Then the receiver sends back an acknowledgement message and synchronized sequence number. 
When sender receives the acknowledgement message in synchronized sequence number from the receiver, it sends an acknowledgement message back, which establishes the connection. This sequence is called three-way handshake. Once a TCP connection is established, the sender always receives a reply from the receiver that information has been received successfully. TCP is slower than UDP but it is a more reliable information transfer method. TCP is used in file exchange, web browsing and email systems. Now about UDP. UDP stands for User Datagram Protocol. UDP is a connectionless protocol. This means that UDP does not establish a connection like TCP does with its three-way handshake. The sender just sends the data as long as there is data to send, and doesn't care whether the data is received properly or not. So, UDP is less reliable than TCP, but is much simpler. UDP is typically used in online games and live streaming. Both of these methods have advantages and disadvantages, so an engineer should choose which method is best suited for the application. Since we will be using Arduino, we need to install Arduino IDE. It is very simple. Arduino IDE can be installed using the apt install command. To play MP3 files we will use the play sound library. Install it using the pip command. We also have to install Python GSD 1.0 package to use the Play Sound library successfully. GStreamer is a streaming media framework based on graphs of filters which operate on media data. Now let's see the code of the client and the server. This is the code of the client side. In this line serial communication with the Arduino is established. Note. That baud rate should be the same with that defined in the Arduino code. Here socket connection is created. AFNet is the internet address family for IPv4. Socketgram is the socket type for UDP. Here IP address of the host and port number are defined. It is safe to use port number between 49,152 and 65,535. In the while loop, data from Arduino is read using the read line method. Then this data is converted to string, encoded and sent to the server. This is the code of the server. Just as we did on the client side, here we also define socket connection. Here, the host's address is not defined. By defining like this, the server will accept connections on all available IPv4 addresses. The bind method is used to associate the socket with a specific network interface and port number. In this part, data from the client is obtained and converted to string format. Here, a string is converted to a float. Note that only the part representing number should be extracted. In this part, based on the distance data obtained, door state is decided. If the distance is larger than 47 cm, the door is considered to be open. Here, if the door state change is detected, a sound file is played. In the end of the program, socket connection is closed. Now let's see the Arduino code. Open Arduino IDE. Here trigger pin and echo pin numbers are defined. In this part variables are defined. Note that the velocity of the sound at 25 Celsius is used. In the setup function serial communication baud rate and pin mode are defined. In this part pulse with 10 microseconds duration is generated. Pulse in function is used to read pulse duration. Since the duration variable represents twice the distance to the surface, it should be divided by 2 to obtain the distance to the surface. In this part the distance in centimeters is obtained. Note that since duration is represented in microseconds, 
we firstly obtain distance in meters by dividing duration by 1 million and then multiply by 100 to get centimeters. Finally, the distance value is sent to Raspberry Pi. Now let's do an experiment. Execute the client UDP and server UDP Python scripts. The door is open. The door is closed. As you can hear, the system works as expected. The door is open. The door is closed.